in. Okay, thank you, Michael. This time we would like to call to order uh, the Building and Grounds Committee meeting, followed by the Policy Committee meeting on Thursday, January 13th, 2022, at 6 p.m. Would we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, thank you for everyone attending tonight. Um, we have uh, a few items on the agenda, uh, which does cover the renovation of Gateway Middle School. With us tonight, uh, we have Mr. Bob Brown uh, from Gateway School District. Uh, Mr. Hank Tassik from Axis Architecture is not with us. Uh, he is a casualty of COVID right now. So he is home uh, quarantining. Uh, he gives his best. I told him that uh, we will provide him with an update of the information that we cover uh, tonight. Also, Doug Zanger from Foreman Construction. Uh, he is our uh, general manager of the project. Uh, he is over there every day on site, uh, working hand in hand with uh, Mr. Brown and Mr. Tassett. Uh, tonight, we wanted to provide our viewing uh, audience, uh, and right. this will be taped, as well as those people who are uh, with us via Zoom, an update of the renovation project status, and also provide individuals with some photos and uh, drone footage that Mr. Mike O'Brown uh, has uh, taken. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, have Maiko, if you can, uh, pull up the drone video. Um, Bob, I don't know if you want to just maybe talk about certain features or... or uh, Doug. Yeah, I, I can handle that. I don't even know if I really need that. Well, that, that helps you here at home. Okay. Red button on the bottom. Should be on. Okay, good evening. This is Doug Zanger. I'm the foreman program and construction managers. So, Michael has, what are they seeing, Michael? Are they seeing your video or the uh, colored slide? Conceptual. About? They're seeing both. <coughs> Split screen. Split screen. So, right now on the right. Freeze the video, Michael, right yeah. there. Perfect. So right now, the two images are reversed. The color image on the right, the top of the sheet, the top of the screen is north. On the image to the other side, or the bottom, bottom left is north. So if you imagine spinning one or the other, 90 degrees would be aligned. And I think Michael can do that. <coughs> He's trying. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. It's not working, but. Well, he's working on that one. Yeah. Um, just as a familiarization. Oh, there's halfway. Halfway. There we are. Yep. Okay, the gray areas on the right side slide are the renovation areas. And the blue are the additions. And then you have some yellow that are some site. Just for familiarization, uh, kind of in the center there, you'll see a green courtyard that's remaining a courtyard at the top toward where it says upside down site plan and below that in yellow is another courtyard we're building two additions into that courtyard one off the old library and one off you know the auditorium corridor so generally speaking that's the scope of the project additions to the south to the bottom of the page which is north actually now is expanding on administration then there's a cross hatched one on the lower uh, left corner, that is an addition. Then there's two blue ones that are addition, the cross hatched one at the top. Those are four additions, classrooms additions. And then to the right of the image, we have blue that is expanding on the auditorium, cafeteria, relocation.
Uh, I think we lost the audio. Give me a few seconds to see what's wrong. It's back now. Uh, I think that's just me. I can't hear the people in the room. Oh, I got you. Okay, to the left, the imagery, from the okay. drone, the uh, cursor. Right now is on the auditorium. Not too much going on right there. We, we're we doing the finishing up the demolition of the auditorium, the duct work up high. We take that and move to the old cafeteria area. And right there is the old cafeteria area that's been demolished. And then on the other side of a corridor that we left in place is the uh, old shop areas that are also demolished. That's all gonna be combined into, part of it's gonna be part of the new cafeteria, part of it's gonna be part of the new gym, the auxiliary gym. And the cafeteria would expand over Correct. to toward the auditorium. Towards the auditorium. Um, so the kitchen, the cooking area is going to be right where that curse, uh, where the red light was, um, right near the auditorium. And the seating area for the cafeteria is pretty much where that slab is. And then we're starting to work. If we can move over from the auditorium, if you were to the curved part of the wall of the auditorium, looking out toward the intersection of 48 and Mike, are you, you able to take this drone video uh, on the opposite side that we looked at this morning? Yes. Okay. Right there. So we'll start there. This is the area that's been stripped and prepared for the uh, four additions. Right now, we really can't see it too well, but way down at the bottom of the screen, you see a little bit of grayness and black. That's where a retaining wall is going in. So we're going to be building that retaining wall up. And there is an old stormwater tank that we found that we're taking part of it off, reducing it in size, but otherwise staying in place and getting this area ready for the additions. And then if you look, follow this, the dirt, if you will, up the side of the building to the north, that direction, you'll see a little grayness. That's where the old administration, the old uh, principal's office was on the corner. And we're building out footings now to you rotate the drone right there. there. Perfect. Perfect. And now we're looking at the circle with the flag and toward the building. That's where we're putting the uh, footings in. And that's going to be expanding the administration part of the building. So at this point, Maiko, if we could go to the imagery, unless we're going to work right in the middle, there is the courtyard that's going to have the, the library expansion. You'll be zoom in, Michael, right here um, with the drone to. Uh, I'm not able to see where you're pointing. Can you? The courtyard uh, opposite by the library. The yep. Right there. Right there. there that would be the expansion okay, so the, of. On the left side is the old library. And that'll be expanded. You can see the footing line. That'll be expanded for a, if I remember correctly, from Hank Media Center. Media Center. Yeah, it's not LGI, it's Media Center. And on the right, we've got the footing lines for the outside wall for more classroom space. So that, and then you can see the remnants of the slab, the rubble to the farther to the right where the administration is going to be. We'll still be keeping the entrance to the auditorium where it is, but it'll be changed somewhat. I don't know if anybody wants to spin anywhere else on this. I think that pretty covers the app, what the drone has. We have a few pictures on more of the site and then in the inside. Being new to the board, I'm sure we can talk to the answer, but what is the capacity of the cafeteria? Am I correct all four? Yes, all four, four grade, grade levels, levels will be in there in multiple lunches. Yeah, just they won't all be in there one at time. one time. Yeah, but um, is the capacity? Are we? Can we go bigger than? Oh, absolutely. Yes, if uh, Mike, if you could put the rendering back up on the right, you'll be able to see the size of the uh, and for everybody that had not had a chance, the first one's better, Mike. Yes, that one. Um, there you go. This is the hallway 
and then from there all the way to the auditorium uh, you see the curved wall there that is the outside wall of the cafeteria now so it almost doubled in size for seating capacity it is slightly under 500 which is very similar to what the high school is oh, okay. and then the kitchen itself is right in that corner so that all is all brand new and uh, it's being moved totally to and that a, yellow area uh, this yellow area is a concrete courtyard or a courtyard to you know for outside eating from the cafeteria to be able to go outside so, and sit down you know that and then this side of the hallway this large rectangle is the auxiliary gym and just to the right of that is our tech ed so there is wood shops computer labs um, there's four classrooms there that are all adjoined with glass walls between them and staircases between them so the teachers can actually go from one classroom to the no to another and still view what's going on in the other is that i auditorium the auditorium gutted, in essence yeah. is gutted but it's staying the same which is, the capacity sure. was just under 800 seats before uh, with a hard ceiling that is all gone it's going to resemble the high school auditorium more where the ceiling is open with sound panels now it's not expanded the stage all the riggings being replaced with new rigging new lighting refinishing the stage new, new seats you know right now it's just one big open empty room thank you i'm sure that's been asked and answered that's okay that's why we're here um and as doug explained you can see the blue area here which is now the administration office guidance counselors and nurses suite talk about the the, the wings Coming out. These four wings here, we have four grade levels, and we're anticipating fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And that is the area that we were focusing on um, on the left hand side. Yeah, which is south towards 48. So there's four fingers that'll come out for those wings. Um, Where the kids go in. Okay, in the, the we have two entrances. We have parent drop off which will come around and actually they will enter what was the original office entrance the buses will come around the back and you can see this dotted line to show you the flow and they will drop off right in this area and that way they will go if we have to stage them we stage them in the auxiliary gym in the cafeteria and then release them into the building also, if you notice on the upper right hand side, as you would enter the campus, all those trees have been removed uh, for additional parking on the upper right hand side. And there, and also adjacent to the auditorium, this was a grass area. We also utilize that for more handicapped visitor parking. Um, so we tried to recapture many spaces for parking since we are doubling the staff over there and any uh, open house concerts uh, parking was at a premium, even though it seems to be large, it was never enough. Yeah. Security um, purposes, are we having metal detectors going in? Um, we have the metal detectors, we actually, you know, back right in this area where they enter. And they will be spread out just as they always were. One at the parent drop off. The majority will be back in this area where the buses drop off. We have also had built in storage, which it's hard to see that right there, there's a little sliver. Uh, that's where there's storage to put them in to get them out of the way for events and you know when they're not in use. Also, what you see here, um, our back of the building is probably the most used area of the buildings uh, even with the bus drop off after hours everybody comes to the back of the building to utilize the gyms the auditorium the media center 
uh, the cafeteria. So what was done was uh, we wanted to make this rear entrance attractive, you know, not just the back of the building. So there's a nice canopy. We actually built in a concession stand that's able to be used from the inside or the outside. Do we have the schematic uh, drawings that can show? Uh, yes, Michael, the picture you had up prior, the floor plan. <clears throat> okay. If you... not, not so much that, uh, the, the visual, uh, oh. how it would look. Oh, the, um, the drawings. Yes, could you put up the exterior rendition? There you yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. The, the the, and you can show the rear of the building. All you right. Describe. What you have here, this is the band area. So you have chorus, band. Um, I, think it, I think it died. Anyhow, you'll see uh, a darker gray area. That is the outside of the kitchen. So we have freezers and all that are inside. Uh, we have an entrance for their ease. Next to it, to the right, you have a radius glass wall. That is the cafeteria. So that'll be looking out towards the fields. Next to that, where it's a gateway sports complex, uh, you have an entrance in between. That's where the buses will drop off, uh, where it says sport complex. Now that's just for this rendition. We will change the name, but that will be the auxiliary gym. And then you have a canopy with an entrance and you'll have the existing gym on the right, the auxiliary gym on the left, the existing gym will be totally refurbished. So we wanted the back of the building to look just as good as the front of the building, since this is what everybody comes to. Can you go to the front of the building like that? All right, that area, whoops, right there. Okay. Either one, Micah, that's good. Okay, those are the four wings that will be projecting out towards Route 48. So, you know, they look very nice. It changes the whole aesthetic look of that building. It brings it up to modern modern days. Um, go to the front, so Micah. Go back to the, the front. There you go. So what you're looking at there, where on the far right, all that glass, that is the lobby and the administration offices. So that will become the main entrance. Um, so I think that the architect has done a terrific job with keeping a lot of the existing materials there, but uh, combining them with new materials to get a, a much more modern look. Question, as at the high school, when you come in the main entrance, they have the top? Yes, we have one. Okay. Um, in order to do that, Michael, can you go to the floor plan then, please? Let's just start up by the auditorium. The, the, the blue, the gray, you know, that, that would be your uh, fine arts area. So you can see band, orchestra, auditorium, art rooms. Uh, one's called a fishbowl. Uh, it's going to be a steam room with a lot of glass that you'll be able to see directly into there from the hallways. Um, can you slide it down just a wee little bit, Michael? We're cutting off the top edge. Down the other way. There you go. Uh, to answer your question, when you walk in those double doors, uh, if you're walking in just off to your left, that will be the security office. And the second set of doors, that creates your man trap. Nobody can come directly from the outside of the building to come through there. They must enter the office, then back into the building. So nobody's going to be able to just to waltz on through. This might be a micro question. Are we still going to have those red boxes, or will there be a different security? Like when a parent comes, they have to put their license in. Are we staying with those? As far uh, as I believe this building will have a uh, security desk that uh, visitors will check into. So there wouldn't be a red box necessarily. Sorry, there would be a person there. Okay. Yeah, similar to what the high school has here. Okay. So these kids really aren't going to want to walk the building for the main class? We tried to separate the building based on a number of things. Grade levels were priority. I mean, also extracurricular activities. So we have security gates spread out through 
this building that we're able to secure the classroom side of the building from the activity side of the building. So, and, and in doing that, you can see it's color coordinated to try to do that. Um, and also to not mix the younger kids with the, the oldest kids. It was our concern as well. I mean, it took probably a couple years to get this nailed down. As you can see, our gyms, they're going to, you know, we've created new locker rooms. Let's see if this will work. Oh, it's back on. In this area here is our existing gym, all new bleachers, all new hoops. We moved our locker rooms, they're both on just the left side of the gym. We have exterior entrances, so our teams can go right out to the fields and back in. We added this area here, which was, for those that are familiar, was the gator pit, aerobics and bikes. We made those in the restrooms. We never had large restrooms at that end of the building we're able to secure them and be able to use them in the evening without opening the building. Where are the restrooms as per the- They are spread out all over. There's here, okay. and those are the large ones here. But if they're single, what we call single seaters factory, they're spread out all down through these areas. So we've got restrooms in the area where we need them. We don't want the faculty to have to walk all the way up to the other side of the building. So there are numerous single seat restrooms for faculty um, and family restrooms if needed. Uh, there's some hidden, these little areas right here, you wouldn't be able to read them. Uh, they are spread throughout. We have mechanical rooms spread throughout. All of that was to be convenient to the area, it was to service. Data closets are spread out all through this building. So there's no long distance for data. Whether we decide down the road, we have to add something. Uh, we hope that won't be for a while, but technology does change. Storage, storage? Storage, again, same thing that, you know, these are, uh, we call them mechanical room, but that is built for storage for us as far as maintenance and supplies. Then you also have these storage rooms that are here for school supplies. Again, they're both spread out through the building, so we don't have to travel from one end of the building to the other. Are you talking also like copiers and that? Where yes, are they well, if you look sometimes, well, some of them, uh, come on. Okay, it's doing it again. Anyhow, in uh, say the light blue area, you see faculty work at the end of the hallway. We have those throughout. So each area has a faculty room with all that equipment. Now, again, it was meant to, to be useful for each individual area. Something I'll note real quick about the cameras. Um, I, uh, a lot. <laughs> Michael, do you know the actual number of cameras? um for the new building yes uh no because they're still being adjusted based on certain conditions so depending on how high the ceiling is um it's going to be significantly more than what was in gateway middle school though we cannot do that at this point that would not go very well with the contract we, we can't do that yeah. <laughs> You know, common areas we're allowed to put cameras yeah. in. Oh, we're right. not allowed to put them in classrooms. And like yeah. the auditorium, even an LGI, we can do cameras. There is not specific classroom issues. Like fights don't normally happen in classrooms. No. They generally end up in the common areas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they want to ride buddy cameras in classrooms. Student privacy issues always come up, um, and and of course uh, teachers, uh, you know, they have a constant camera on them while they're teaching. And we understand that that happens, but uh, 
online, but uh, th there's no need at this point for cameras in classrooms. So all of these classrooms, though, are wired uh, for all the newest technology. Michael had spent hours or days just going over it, what his needs would be for technology. So that was one of the things that uh, was very time consuming, trying to figure all that out. Um, and Michael was pretty much heading that uh, area up along with the engineers, you know, to make sure that was all covered. So we think we, we have everything covered. Um, and we always put some extra wiring in just in case as a spare that something comes up that was missed. Uh, they all have new technology. Where's your refreshment stand at? It, the concession stand is right by the gym entrance. It's hard. This the clicker is it's right here, so you can utilize it from the hallway if we have basketball games or whatnot. But also, it has a roll-up door from out on underneath that canopy if we're at you know baseball, football, track. So we have the ability to have that there. Michael, what were you going to say about the pop ears? Oh, just that um, they won't necessarily have dedicated spaces. Um, like what we did at the high school is we let students actually use the copiers to print their print jobs. So instead of having a set of printers for students and a set of copiers for teachers, uh, we consolidate that into um, shared devices that are accessible by everyone. Doug, would you like to elaborate more like on the media center and what's going on in, in Come on. Well, what I could say about the media center is one is it's doubling in size essentially from what the library was. And I'm, I can't speak for the district on this because I'm not as familiar, but I expect you're getting a little away from the books. I'm not sure to what extent. Yeah. But that'll be a, still be prevalent inside there. But uh, the, the use of technology, uh, of course, student driven at this point, where it, it's noticeable that it becomes the hub of the building right in the center there. And Doug had referenced that um, in, in the one courtyard building out and laying the footers for that area. So uh, it, it's going to be uh, an open space, a number of uh, glass features in it that uh, when kids walk by, uh, it, it'll be pretty impressive. So, Micah. And this, this actual drawing is an earlier rendition. Uh, the media center is on the northern side of this hallway in entirety. We put in a complete TV studio. So, you know, rather than just a green screen and a wall, that they're going to be able to train on numerous, you know, production items in a TV studio, which will be right there. Um, the LGI just flips to the other side of the hall. Party in the TV room. In the studio. <laughs> you, you see the locker count as well. Yes. Uh, and the, the square footage that, that has been added. What is the anticipation of the number of students when this renovation is completed? Do you have like a projected? I know that enrollment has yeah. increased. We, we do project it would be. Probably around 11 or 1200 students. And are it's built in for lockers? expansion. No, the, these are wider lockers. Uh, these are actually the high school. The high, same yeah. as the high school. We opted to go with uh, those lockers. If you've been to the high school, those lockers have been in there for going on 24 years. They look like they're brand new, they're durable, they hold, you know, they hold up. Right. They're just, they look like they're brand new. We opted to go with those throughout this building. And you can put your winter coat in. They are bigger lockers. Yes, not like the, the old ones that you can't fit a backpack in. Um, there's also room built in here for expansion. Absolutely. You know, that was one of the things that we had to make sure we didn't build it just to the size we need today. No, uh, we're, we wanted to make sure we, we had room to grow.
I'm sure explaining uh, things that you've already explained. Uh, pictures, pictures up. If we have time, we could go to the pictures. Yeah, if we could post this real quick. Yeah. Mike, oh, can you scroll through them or do you want me to scroll through uh, on the inside, the one Doug sent you earlier? Uh, I'm going to have to scroll through them. So just, right, yeah, we can just, scroll through them. just quickly, this is where the shops used to be. That's where part of the auxiliary gym is going to be. Can go on next one. And that is the old cafeteria, which will become part of the new cafeteria. Go ahead, Mike. It's a view of the front where we've nibbled off the front of the building. There will be a new flagpole. Yes, not that rusty old thing. And then, Micah, the next one. That's more of the same nibbling off. That's where the art rooms used to be. Go ahead, Micah. And this is the interior courtyard where, where that compressor is sitting. That's in the new classrooms. And then where those pipes are sticking up, just beyond that is where the current pump out you see for the library will be expanded for the, uh, uh, got the name now. Media Center. Media Center. Are a lot of those windows be broken? No. Are they broken? Will they be? No. You mean as in removed? Yes. Oh, no, most of the, all the windows are staying. Uh, most, of, there's some that are being replaced in because with the additions on the street side, mm -hmm we're closing off or butting into where there's windows right now and that those little windows for the library that wall will be opened up so we can expand this way but the windows you see to the right those will stay there we've yeah. already replaced some of the uh solid colored yeah the just top. Kind of, that would be like at the top here and the reason for that they were colored panels like you see here well we're raising the ceiling height and sloping it to gather daylight so that's going to help us brighten those rooms and within those classrooms there's daylight harvesting so if it's a bright day they will dim and you know vice versa and that'll all be automatic yeah go ahead michael and this is our lovely new old storage tank that we're taking out a couple of sections of to make way for the, one of the new additions at the end Hey, Mike. This is a picture of the old gym. Everything but the curtains out now. And the, the old basketball hoops, those are coming out. Those will be replaced. The stands are pulled off, those will be replaced. And the floor refinished. Go ahead, Micah. This is on the boys' locker room side that's now going to be both locker rooms. Go ahead, Micah. And this is inside the library that will be the media center. And those trenches are for where we got stormwater coming from the courtyard outside through here to get out of the building. Go ahead, Michael. Here's a look down one of the corridors, the emptiness, except we've already got ductwork that's started inside the building. And it's not as easy to tell, but to the right side, running down the wall, is a new conduit. So our electricians, our sheet metal workers, and uh, plumbers have been very busy on the renovation side. Since we're not tearing too much apart, they're doing as much as they can already on there. So the general approach that we would have approached the building in two ways, simultaneously, the additions and the renovations, rather than do one than the other, which would take longer. Okay, Michael, there's one or two more. This might be the last one. Look inside the electrical room, all new electrical gear for the building. Michael, I think that was the last one. It was, yeah. Okay. You, you can definitely tell from uh, really six, seven months. And we're hitting our seventh month. Yeah, it, it's a lot of work that's being completed over there. And, uh, uh, weekly meetings are being held every Wednesday. Uh, it's either over on site or in my office. I meet, meet every Wednesday with the foreman to make sure they're coordinated, talking to each other. Excuse me, Bill. Yes. When did you say that meeting was, Bill? We meet every Wednesday. Um, it alternates between at the job site in Foreman's trailer and then rotates over to my office the following week. Nine right, thank you.
Yeah, the, the one in Bill's office is owner's meeting, uh, progress, mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things. The contractor meeting on site is just that to make sure everybody's on the same page. Gotcha. Thanks. Any more problems with vandalism? It's cold right now, so no, not at the <laughs> moment. The last was, uh, was December 29th. Nothing since then. Uh, and we've broken the building down and closed it off to, to maintain the heat in the building, so that obviously helps as well. Generator? A new yeah. generator will be placed outside the building. The current one is a very small one, which is just in the basement. Uh, we have a new generator. Uh, the pads are all poured, transformer pads are all poured. That is all on the PennDOT side of the building, the southern side that's all ready to go in. That'll be a diesel generator just because of the sheer size um, that we're able to fill with a truck from the outside. Also, the grease trap from the kitchen. Yes, it is now outside of the kitchen where they already they put them now they're not inside the building so they're able to be maintained outside the building it is just outside of the cafeteria area kitchen area also right in that same area is our trash which you know we don't want to haul it too far with the amount of trash from lunches uh, but it's all enclosed so we're not seeing it and one thing I didn't mention on the back of the building where you saw all that glass, well, that faces west. And those of you that are familiar with our press box, it faces west. The afternoon sun comes in there. We have power shutters on those windows to help with the shading, along with tinted glass, which we did not have that in the high school in the press box. So that was a key with that, that sun creating heat. Yes, central air, it's all forced air, uh, rooftop units, um, central air dehumidification, and we have the ability to exchange the air 100%. So in different zones, we have, I believe it's 29, 28 rooftop units total, somewhere in there. So uh, the reason we also opted for rooftop units over a boiler system, if your boiler breaks down, school is closed. If one of these units breaks down, we shut down a small area. So that keeps us open and not have to be as concerned uh, as we do about boilers. Uh, and with a boiler, we'd have to have two systems. We'd have to have the boiler and then we'd, we would have to have a cooling system. This way we have one system. And today's market, we, we have trouble with um, people being able to maintain boiler systems. It's kind of going by the wayside. Getting those folks that work on them, they're just not there. So this is something that we felt a lot more comfortable with being able to maintain for the future. You can control that from your computer? Yes, everything, uh, this system, just as Ramsey Elementary and the high school, they, uh, they're all gonna be the same system. That's a train control system. So instead of three or four systems, we were gonna, we were gonna end up with one. So we're able to know it better inside and out. So individual classrooms will not have their own? Control, own no. Okay. It'll be preset. Yeah, just, um, and the reason we do it, it does it in, in zones. Um, unfortunately, people are different. I might like it cold. You might like it hot. We can't have those units fighting each other. And some teachers come into different classrooms at different times, and we don't want them set a temperature. The next teacher comes and sets it differently. But we will keep it within a range and adjust as necessary because the west side of the building is going to be warmer than the east side of the building. So, uh, and we'll be doing that per zone. Next week. Um, scheduled for opening in July, August of 23. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, 
Next, next item on the uh, agenda would be the Gateway High School athletic field renovation. Uh, there has been some activity up at the Gateway High School uh, baseball and softball fields. Uh, uh, I'll have Mr. Brown just briefly touch on it because uh, muscular lighting has been in. Actually, uh, as of today, all the light pole standards, light fixtures, they were dropped off here. Our intent is to start Monday, boring the locations. We've already prepped the fields for their equipment to come in and bore the bases. So we intend on starting that next week to get those in. Uh, once those are in, then we will follow up with all the the ditch which work in order to run the conduits to where they need to go. So that's all beginning now. It's it's in progress. So and they will be operational. They will be the operational season. for the beginning of the baseball softball season. And just like our stadium lights, they will be able to be controlled via certain person's Smart. telephones or computer. So we're able to handle that. Uh, they will all be LED lighting. So we're very excited about that because the usability of this area will expand. And at the conclusion, at the conclusion of the baseball and softball season, uh, we will then begin excavation of those two fields, uh, removal of the dirt that we transfer down to what we refer to as the library field in front of Mossad Middle School to kind of raise that up and then with the installation of the artificial turf. So uh, we anticipate that beginning May. Well, yeah, May, as soon as the, May, as soon as the season is finished. And that should be completed by August, September. We hope to utilize it for fall. Fall ball. Mm -hmm. So everything would be on pace for the fields. Are you getting new scoreboards for these fields? Yes. Yes. They are wireless scoreboards. They are both the same. Uh, they're actually mm -hmm. have been ordered. Uh, they're due in. So we, we wish to have them up at the beginning of the season as well. The, the existing ones are old. Uh, they're light bulbs. If you can imagine that old, they are mm -hmm. light bulbs. So uh, we will install those to be in use for the beginning of the season. Mr. Holzman, there won't be any issues with the middle school and high school seasons? Don, can you, did you hear that? You're muted if you can hear that. There I did you. hear that, yes. Schedule. Uh, the question was, yeah, so basically, um, we are going to have uh, baseball is the only one that is duplicated uh, because there is, you know, no longer the baseball field available at Gateway Middle. So our, our middle school schedule will have to be interwoven with our varsity JV schedule for baseball. Uh, previously, we had played softball uh, on two different fields uh, on the high school campus. So that will not be affected by the renovation. So we feel very confident that with the number of games we play, we've talked a little bit about if we get in a pinch when WADA gives us our middle school schedule, uh, that we, we may ask to move a game or two away if it, if it can't be um, remedied. But we feel like we can, we can accommodate everybody uh, with, this, with both fields. Okay, thanks. Also, whenever I mentioned the removal of the topsoil, uh, from these fields and placement down at the, the library field, uh, that would then allow the district to pave that and utilize it for the marching band area as well as along with um, parking. Well, when are you putting the lights up? When? Where? Yeah, they're all staked. There are nine light poles. Uh, one of them is shared between the softball baseball field, but they are in locations that were designed by Musco Lighting to, you know, accommodate our sports. And if I could interject one more time, I, I forgot to mention that uh, when when Bob mentioned more playability or more usability, uh, we can also schedule all of our baseball games under the lights and play the middle school games after school or even 
uh, you know, invite some of our middle school teams to come and play in the evening as well. And we have that ability in softball as well, which we didn't previously have. We have new stands also coming in. We do not. There's nothing. Those stands are uh, they're in fine shape. Mm -hmm. We are contemplating adding, but we don't have that in there at this point. Okay, uh, Michael. And I don't know if that's a standard picture if you're on Google Earth, but if you can go to Google Earth for me. That's Google Earth. And if you could move. Uh, back by the old airport behind Evergreen. You might have to direct me on that. Okay, go up to Evergreen. Okay, right you stop there. right there. Right there. Pull it out a little higher, Micah. I think we're all very familiar with the uh, residential townhomes going into that area behind Evergreen near the Plum Border. Uh, there's also um, was an auxiliary golf course back there in that open ground area. Uh, so we are currently experiencing those homes being occupied, which is a positive thing because we have students who have enrolled living in that area behind Evergreen. Also, um, the apartment building right along the parkway. And if Mike, go, you could pull out uh, by the parkway by Gateway Middle School. And if you would be traveling or would be going left, Mike, right Yeah, keep there. pulling over, Mike. We're stopped right there and to that area right to the right. You don't see the building in place right there to the right where Bob is uh, pointing his laser ring. That is the apartment complex. Uh, they are now occupying that building as well. It looks beautiful coming up from uh, the parkway east towards Monroeville. So again, we are now seeing some additional students uh, registering and enrolling in our schools, uh, primarily in the Evergreen uh, residential area for the, for the school. Also, uh, Monroeville has notified my office. And this one was uh, a surprise to me, but uh, it made all of us, uh, Bob, myself, you, we decided, okay, let's pull up Google Earth and take a look. Mike, if you could pull back where the Target and Giant Eagle is right off of Monroeville Boulevard. Right there. If you notice that large flat land of space uh, accompanied by uh, some tree lined areas that kind of slope off and there is an auxiliary road and I know Mr. Brown is pointing to that that takes you right down to Strohshine. When Roeville has informed the Gateway School District that that property has been uh, acquired and will be utilized for additional housing for the area. So they plan on building homes uh, on that area, and I believe it would connect some way uh, to the developments that sit behind um, that Rose Cliff uh, and area off of uh, Monroe Boulevard. So uh, this, of course, you know, all of these uh, projects, uh, you know, we are aware of those. We are constantly looking at um, how this could impact overall attendance. Uh, we do know that our kindergarten and first grade enrollment has been uh, increasing over these last two years compared to what has been projected uh, four or five years ago. Understanding, of course, that none of these projects uh, were, were even mentioned. So with that, uh, we, we are constantly evaluating uh, the use of our buildings grade levels, uh, zones uh, for enrollment, et cetera. We do know that uh, uh, we have areas in University Park uh, that have a large uh, amount of students uh, who are attending that neighborhood school. Uh, and then we anticipate Evergreen as well uh, with the latest construction. So uh, uh, we will continue to update our constituents or our board with the planning and preparation for this, understanding that we do have 
uh, a renovated uh, new middle school here on the horizon within the next year and a half. So um, there are plans. I'm not sure we're ready to release those yet, but we are uh, evaluating uh, certain zones for schooling based off of this. Okay. And that's all I have for uh, building and grounds. We can close that out. If we have any questions. Uh, we can move right into the policy committee meeting. We do have uh, one item on the agenda tonight. Uh, this has been discussed uh, internally at central office. Thank you, thank you, Micah. Thanks, Micah. Thanks, Micah. Micah, if you want to stay on just in case. Yeah, if you want to stay on, Maiko, uh, I'll actually have uh, Maiko. Uh, we, we meet uh, internally in central office uh, every Monday morning at 9 o'clock, and every one of our central administrators uh, kind of debriefs, um, determines what's uh, a pressing issue. And Michael was able to identify an issue here that um, – it is costly to the district. Uh, we, we have students who may disenroll, move to another district, and then based off of our one-to-one -one policy with computers, uh, they may disenroll, go to their next school, and then equipment has not been returned. Uh, Michael, do you want to elaborate a little bit further on that? Um. Sure, yeah, so um, this is not specific to um, technology. However, um, it's probably disproportionately affecting us with uh, us transitioning one-to-one. -one. So every student is uh, supplied a Chromebook, an iPad, um, in some cases, other accessories. Um, when they're attending here, everything's fine. What we're finding out is the student will move once they are in the new district they're going to, then they file the withdrawal paperwork. So. We actually don't know ahead of time that a student is leaving until they are already in their new district. At that point, getting in touch with the family, um, having them send back the device, especially if they're in another state, is very difficult. So uh, when we were looking into it, we found um, other departments. So athletics has this problem with uh, uniforms. Um, we have this problem with uh, library fees not being paid. So it's something that as we were researching it, it's um, you know, a problem throughout the district. So with, with that, we do have policy 208 that identifies withdrawals from school of students. And within this policy, it does state that the principal of the building would be responsible for the collection of materials. Again, the, the policy itself uh, needed to be updated to uh, reflect some of the materials that now need to be collected. So the, the administration would like to add within this policy um, a hold on records, uh, individuals uh, that may request those either from a parent or from the school district. Um, if there are vital information, we would be obligated by law to release those, of course. However, if there are other informational items that is being requested, of course, the district would have to maintain uh, a hold to allow those items to be either returned or paid for. What is the difference between the vital records by law and what? Yeah, typically uh, we would have to release IEP uh, information, um, student grades. No, they're by law if they. That is correct, yes. And then, but what would you hold? Uh, we, we could hold anything from uh, uh, individual records that may be reflected from a, a classroom, um, so-called discipline records. We wouldn't release those at 28. And just to be clear, Dr. Short, almost regardless to whatever policy we have in place, the way you're describing it, often the students leave the district really without notice or without warning, right? That, that is correct. And then we receive via, typically the guidance office from wherever the individual would leave from, the request for records. And at that point in time, 
the student records are automatically transferred to uh, the school that they would be going to. And at that point, we do send individual notices, letters, right. et cetera, when that you may owe something. Right. When, when the student and, of course, the, the parent gets the piece of hardware in the first place, I, I assume there's some kind of disclosure or they're made aware that they're responsible for it and also responsible for returning it? That is correct. Michael, we had talked. Um, okay, so it's up. Michael? Jack, one minute. Michael and I have talked. Um, students that you will see on some of this where there has been um, damage, where screens have been broken, things like that, they do not take care of it, which is still coming out of our budget to repair it. So that's right, right. why on this, Jack, I have copies for you, Mary Beth and Mr. Ritter. Um, okay. So he ran me a list Thank of, you. of bills outstanding just a year from today. And we're looking at a total of 34,000 out of pocket just, thanks Micah, mm -hmm. for one year. So there's others that, you know, like that's why I have on one of the sheets showing, um, I talked to Mr. Hall, there's been athletic uniforms that haven't been returned. So that again, costs the district, whether it's a football uniform for a way or um, the numbers have to change. So there's more things that. Right. Say it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just agreeing. Okay. And, and uh, of course, the, the language that we would uh, craft for this uh, would be run by the solicitor's office to ensure that uh, uh, everything would be in line with uh, legal ramifications. But what barriers would the families face? If they just can't get discipline notes or notes from the teacher to enroll a student somewhere else. What barriers? Yeah, like what are real, what actually are these consequences? Are they enough to regain this stuff? Well, uh, two things can happen. Uh, we, we can send a notice and a, uh, the magistrate to have these items uh, returned or paid for. Uh, that's one avenue that we can go down. Uh, again, time consuming on everyone's end. Uh, so our goal is to get these right away before the, the, the child officially enrolls. Right, now I understand that, but if by law you have to send IEP and grade. You're, you're correct, yeah. It, it, there's very little we can do, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Yep. But what we're trying to do is put some meat into this policy in order to try to retrieve the information. And I would add one note. Um, the reason why sometimes it's so difficult to reach out to these families to get them to return stuff is we have a mailing address and we have an email address. When you move, a lot of times you lose both at the same time. Um, just being able to withhold records, even for just a little bit, for then the family to reach back out to us, give us contact information, we might be able to recover this with uh, very little effort. We just have no way of reaching some of these families anymore. I did talk to our state rep's office, um, which reached out to PSBA. Um, PSBA says it's on each district. This is not new to Gateway. This is a lot of districts are experiencing this problem and they have their own uh, policy as far as retaining records. So that's when a child goes and enrolls somewhere else mm -hmm. and the records are requested rather it be electronically or whatever. At that point, Point. Don't you get their new address? We, we do not know. We, we only get the information that comes requested from the individual school itself or district. Do you have anybody that calls the council and asks for their address? I mean, we could. Hey, one quick question for Mike. Go. It. It just... No, no. Mike, go. Yeah, I'm here. I want something new one. Yeah. Mike, can you want one? Are you able to essentially disable the use of something like an iPad by changing the password or something? Uh, and yes, and we do that. And that's actually how we're able to recover um, several of the devices that we're able to get. Well, my whole point is. 
Sorry, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Uh, no, I think we might have lost what you were saying. Um, you said what, you, what your point was. Now, and I understand exactly. What you you started about. to say that that's how you've recovered from things. All right, I'm going to bow out now because this is, this is not working. And... Jack, are you talking about pinging a machine to see where it's located? Yeah, that's still not getting the equipment back. That's yeah, and, and the, the other difficult part of this, and I, I clearly understand what Leslie's saying here, that you know we want a little bit more teeth in this. We're, we're very limited by what we can do. Uh, where if a student transfers, that student and that school has five to seven days to get that child enrolled by law. Meaning they can't just sit at home and wonder, okay, uh, I haven't heard back from the receiving school because maybe Gateway's holding up records. Because essentially they're gonna say, Gateway's responsible for not having this kid in school. So I want everyone to be aware of all this. And that's why the legalese has to be very, very important if we're going to uh, draw up this policy. It just puts more responsibility back on the parents. This is how uh, I agree. This is what we need to start. What about and and I know people like and I don't know we're in similar worlds, but kind of mm -hmm. not really, right? Uh, when I have to get educational records, mm -hmm. I have a parent sign that educational. When we give them these technology mm -hmm. books. And we have them sign that, and that will give the other school district if they withdraw. We have them automatically sign a release of information without filling out the next school district. That way, the other school district can share with us their information. I'm not following that. So there's a state release mm -hmm. that can be signed so that it gives parents or Gateway or my office, right? Mm -hmm. The okay to call and say to the school, what address and phone number do you have for mom? Who drops mom off? What is the attendance of the kids, mm -hmm. right? If you pulled that state release and had each parent sign it every year, so then the other school can't say, well, I can't give you mom because you don't have a release. I mean, I can talk to you more about how yeah. that works, but they're, they're, it's on the state website. Mm -hmm. It's an educational release that most of your counselors would know. Sure. But that might help when I say, well, do you pick up the phone and call the counselor at the other school and say, hey, what's their address? They might not give it to you for privacy. That's correct. But if, Part of this policy is signing a release of information if ever withdrawn then we'll be able to get that yeah and i have to check with our uh, see, council see yeah. if that if your entity is able mm -hmm. to do that no i understand what you're saying and then a letter can go directly there and mm -hmm. maybe that'll so bottom line uh, we will draft some language um that legally can be utilized and, and we'll share it out with the board. Well, do, do we snail mail at all, anything? We do, yes, certified yeah. mail. I remember a couple years back, we switched software and we had to send out the bus schedules. Correct. And at that time, we received a large number of addresses that weren't true. Mm -hmm. Is that something we can look to maybe do two times a year? Because Michael says, you know, these addresses aren't what they are. And we did catch a lot of people that did not reside mm -hmm. in the school district also. Yes, we can. And um, we have taken measures over the last six years to, to really tighten uh, the, the residency requirements uh, uh, for leases, uh, uh, home ownership 
And you know, we're seeing a new wave of one month leases come into play for families, which you know uh, puts another uh, step in the process where our uh, registration office is constantly saying, okay, we'll be renewed for another month. So to answer your question, yes, we can do that. So you want an overall policy to include not only the technology, but everything, the athletic losses. And yes, okay. and right now it's just basically a generic um, line in the policy that basically requires the principal uh, be responsible for the retrieval of equipment and or um, other district owned items. One of the other principles is one of the gateway schools. They used to have a sign off sheet that the students would leave mm -hmm. to see if technology is returned, their books were returned. Is that something that would fall back on each individual school? Okay, no one time. Some do, some do, but they don't all get everything back. Is there a policy in place for the damaged? Yes. But we're losing money on damage. Like Sorry, uh, what was that question one more time? Damaged items. Um, so uh, for this year and last year, how we treated damages, as long as the device was kept in its assigned case, we do not charge for accidental damage. Um, the only thing we charge for is abuse. So you um, took the device out of the case or you purposely damaged the hardware. So um, in terms of fees for damages, um, it's very minimal. However, I would say this new policy should encompass any financial obligation, whether it was from damage of technology, lost technology, um, a lost book from the library, uh, it should cover everything. Are all the devices insured? Yes. So these are the deductibles for the damage. Michael? Yeah, so all the devices are covered under some kind of uh, accidental damage program through a third party, um, which is why we're not um, passing that those fees off to the <coughs> children. But again, when something's purposely damaged, it's uh, outside of that uh, warranty scope. Is there a deductible on the damage devices? Uh, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Is there a deductible on the damaged devices? Not with the programs we have. Um, they all actually are zero deductible for us. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll draft some language and um, have a first look at it. Put it for the board. Um, at this time, we would like to adjourn the meeting. I want to especially thank everyone for attending tonight. Uh, we are recording this, so we'll be able to post it on the district website. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Bye-bye.